All right, welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to talk about negative exponents. So in this section, you're going to learn how to simplify an expression using with negative exponents. And then you're going to practice using exponent rules to simplify exponential expressions. We're really just adding one more piece to the last section. And then we're going to practice those rules again. So from the quotient rule in the last section, it's possible to determine the following, right? If you've got x cubed divided by x to the fifth, that's going to be x to the 3 minus 5, which is equal to x to the minus 2. But what does it mean to actually have that negative exponent? Well, instead, let's look at the problem in a slightly different way. If we've got x cubed divided by x to the fifth, then we've got three x's in the numerator and five in the denominator. If we cancel out the ones that divide to one, so x divided by x is one, x divided by x is one, and so on, what you're left with is a one in the numerator and two x's in the denominator, or one over x squared. And so what this really means is that x to the minus two is the same thing as one over x squared. So if we have a negative exponent, that just implies that the variable needs to move across the division bar for that exponent to become positive. And so if the negative exponent's in the numerator, the variable will move to the denominator and the exponent becomes positive. If the negative exponent's in the denominator, it'll move to the numerator and become positive. And so when you're dealing with negative exponents, you're just moving across the division bar and changing the sign of the exponent. <clears throat> so let's first simplify these by writing everything with positive exponents. We have 3 to the minus 2. Well, 3 to the minus 2, if we want to write this with positive exponents, we want to move it across the division bar, so it's going to become 1 over... 3 to the positive 2. Well, 3 to the positive 2, that's 1 over 3 times 3, or just 1 over 9. Or so if you have a negative exponent, move it across the fraction bar or the division bar. Move it to the bottom or top of the fraction, depending on where it's located. And make the exponent positive. So here we've got 2 times x to the minus 3. The important thing to notice here is that the 2 is not raised to that exponent. It's only the x. So the x is the only thing that's going to move. The 2 is going to stay where it is. So now we have 2, and we're going to move x to the bottom, and the exponent becomes positive. And so what we're left with is just 2 over x cubed. And finally, negative 2 to the minus 4, we can rewrite that as 1 over negative 2 to the positive 4. We just move it to the opposite side of the division bar, or the fraction bar, and the exponent becomes positive. That's going to give us 1 over negative 2 4 times. And if we multiply negative 2 times itself 4 times, we're going to get 1 over positive 16. So now we want to simplify these expressions and only write them using only positive exponents. Here we're going to start mixing and matching rules from the last section and this section. So here we've got y over y to the minus 2. Well, that negative exponent's in the denominator. We're going to take it and move it to the numerator. And that exponent's going to become positive. So it becomes y times y squared. Well, y to the first times y squared, when we multiply numbers, we add their exponents. And so that's y to the 1 plus 2, which is just y cubed.
Now, here on the bottom, we have p to the minus 4 over q to the minus 9. They both have negative exponents, so both are going to move. The q is going to move to the numerator. The p is going to move to the denominator. When q moves to the numerator, its exponent will become positive. And when p moves to the denominator, its exponent will become positive. And so you get q to the ninth over p to the fourth. So if the exponents are negative, just move them around. And they'll become positive. Let's keep trying a few more of these examples. So here we got 3a squared over b raised to the negative 3 power. So let's use the product rule and the power rule that we used last time. Remember, if we have a fraction, we can rewrite that as the numerator and the denominator raised to that same exponent. And then we can break the numerator up. That's 3 to the minus 3rd power. That's a squared to the minus 3rd power over b to the minus 3rd power. Now here, everything's going to have negative exponents. So let's just simplify the numerator just a little bit. This is going to be 3 to the minus 3 a squared to the negative 3, that's going to give us a to the 2 times negative 3, or negative 6. And then on the bottom, we just have b to the minus 3. Now again, everything here has negative exponents. So we're going to move some stuff around. The b's will move to the numerator. And the other two are going to move to the denominator. And then all of the exponents will become positive. So if b moves to the numerator, we get b to the positive 3. And then on the bottom, we get 3 to the positive 3. And a to the positive 6. Everything with a negative exponent just moves. Now, b cubed is just b cubed. 3 to the 3rd power is 27, a to the 6th. Finally, this problem here, we've got y to the minus 3, z to the 6th to the negative 6. Well, that's just like raising each variable in the problem to the same power. When we raise a power to a power, we multiply. Negative 3 times negative 6, that's going to give us y to the positive 18. And then 6 times negative 6 will give z to the minus 36. And now the one that's negative is going to have to move to the denominator, and the exponent will become positive. Let's try a couple more of these. So now we've got x to the minus 7 over x to the fourth cubed. Let's just leave x to the minus 7 for now. We can simplify the denominator. x to the 4th cubed is x to the 4 times 3, or x to the 12th. And now we can take the negative one and move it to the bottom. So we get 1 over x to the 7th times x to the 12th. And now since we're multiplying these numbers, we're going to add their exponents. And 7 plus 12 is 19. Finally, the last problem. We 
we can rewrite this. Well, let's first 3, a to the 4th, b to the 0, c to the 6th, over 6, a, b squared, c to the 8th. So let's break this up a little bit. We can write 3 over 6. We'll just keep the numbers together. Times a to the 4th over a times b to the 0 over b squared times c to the 6th over c to the 8th. Well, hopefully there's a couple of things we can recognize. 3 over 6, they're both divisible by 3. That's going to give us 1 half. a to the 4th divided by a to the 1st is going to be a to the 4 minus 1. b to the 0 is just 1, and so we're left with 1 over b squared. We don't have to do anything else because that b squared is positive. And then on the last, we get c to the 6 minus 8. Well, that gives us 1 half a to the third times 1 over b squared times c to the minus 2. Well, since we have c to the minus 2, that just means it has to move to the denominator. And what we're left with is 1 a cubed in the numerator and then 2 b squared c squared in the denominator. And so at the end of this lesson you should be able to use the rules for negative exponents to simplify expressions and then you'll be able to combine all of these rules with exponents to simplify expressions overall.